Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video, I am going to teach you how to create uh, one uh, beautiful and uh, smooth loading animation in uh, Jetpack Compose. Okay, so this is how our animation uh, will look like at the end. So uh, we are going to have uh, three different circles and uh, each one of those circles uh, will animate its uh, Y position. And uh, now you can see that uh, basically there is also a delay between uh, those uh, three animations or those three circles. And uh, in this video, I am going to teach you how to achieve exactly that. Uh, okay, so the first thing uh, which uh, I am going to show you here before we actually start with the code is uh, the actual design. So here I have designed uh, how our animation uh, will actually look like. So we are going to have uh, those uh, three circles and they are going to be uh, inside uh, one row. Okay, and here as you can see, each one of those uh, circles uh, will travel a certain distance of uh, 20 pixels in the Y axis on the top. So the first uh, circle on the left side uh, will start this animation. Uh, then after a delay of uh, 100 milliseconds, this uh, second one uh, will start. And after uh, 200 milliseconds, the third circle uh, will start. So there will be a slight delay between uh, those uh, three uh, circles and the one on the left will start first and the one on the right will uh, start last. And the actual animation which we are going to use here uh, will be a translate Y. So we are going to basically move uh, this uh, circle on the Y axis uh, by 20 pixels. Of course, you can change this value to uh, be greater than uh, 20 pixels or lower than that. It's up to you. And here on this image on the right side, uh, you are going to see how this animation uh, will look like when the first uh, circle completes and uh, it gets back to its original position. So the first uh, circle uh, will be the one to first uh, start this animation and it will be the first to end this animation, okay? And now that we know uh, how this animation will actually look like, now let's go to our Android Studio project, and uh, here I'm going to create a new uh, Kotlin file named uh, Loading Animation. Let's create a composable function with that same name. So Loading Animation, there we go. So this uh, function will have uh, multiple parameters. Uh, the first one uh, will be a modifier. So uh, Android X uh, Compose UI. And let's also specify here a default value. There we go. Uh, the second parameter here uh, will be a circle size. So the size of this uh, circle uh, needs to be represented through this uh, DP. And the default value for now uh, will be 25 uh, DP. Okay. Uh, next, the circle uh, color uh, will have a type of a color. So Android X Compose UI Graphics. And its default value uh, will be a material theme dot uh, colors dot uh, primary. Now all those parameters here, uh, even though they have a default value, uh, you will be able to change those uh, parameters by yourself. Uh, and uh, now let's specify a uh, space between. So this is the space between those uh, circles. And let's add here a DP as well. And a default value here can be maybe number 10, so 10 DP. And the last parameter uh, will be a travel uh, distance. So the travel distance uh, will also be represented through the DP and a default value will be uh, 20 DP which uh, we are going to convert into pixels a little bit later. Now those were all parameters which this function will have. Uh, now below that uh, I'm going to create one variable named uh, circles and I'm going to create a list here actually. So each one of those items from this list uh, will be remembered across uh, multiple recompositions. Let me just move that right here, okay. And here I'm going to call uh, animatable. So animatable, there we go. And initial value uh, will be here uh, 0f. And uh, there will be uh, three different uh, remembered uh, animatable uh, values here. Okay, and each one of those uh, will have initial value of 0. So those values are going to be animated in this uh, composable function. So you will see about that. Uh, anyhow, uh, below that, uh, I'm going to also create a new variable uh, named um, circle values. And then I'm going to call here this uh, circles uh, a list of uh, animatable items. And then I'm going to map uh, those uh, values. So I'm going to say it dot value. And the value is the actual float value of uh, each one of those items. So its initial uh, float value will be zero. And uh, its uh, target value later will be one. So those uh, three circles uh, will be animated from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0. 
So here uh, the type of this uh, variable is actually a list of uh, float values. And this one has a type of a list of uh, animatable objects. So now down below I'm going to create uh, one row actually. So we can create uh, those uh, three circles. And uh, to this uh, row I'm going to specify just uh, one parameter and that will be a modifier uh, from the parameters of our uh, function. And uh, inside this row I'm going to call this uh, circle uh, values and I'm going to call for each uh, indexed uh, composable function. Let's rename this uh, to value for example, okay. And now for each uh, one of those uh, items or values in this list, uh, we are going to create uh, one circle. So there will be three circles in total and uh, I'm going to represent those circles uh, through a box uh, composable function. Let's uh, call here modifier and the first uh, one uh, will be a size. So the size of each uh, circle uh, will be a circle size from the parameters of this function and that value is uh, 25 dp. Uh, next uh, I'm going to also create here uh, one new variable uh, named uh, uh, distance and then I'm going to call here a uh, width uh, function. So with a local uh, density dot uh, current I'm going to call this uh, travel distance uh, from the parameters of this function and convert that to a pixels. There you go and now this uh, distance variable is a float value and that uh, float value uh, will be passed uh, here in this uh, graphics layer uh, modifier. So let's uh, move this uh, translate uh, y or translation y uh, property. So I'm going to say here a minus uh, value times the distance. So what will this do? It will basically move our circle on the y axis. So this value basically can be either 0 or 1. And the minus means that uh, we are going to move uh, this uh, circle on the top because a minus or a negative value will move this uh, circle on the top and a positive value will move this uh, circle on the bottom. Okay, so that's the main difference. We want to move our uh, circle on the top so that's why we are using a minus here times the distance. And the distance is basically 20 pixels. So after that uh, I'm going to call a background modifier and then for the color I'm going to specify a circle uh, color and then for the shape I'm going to specify a circle shape. There you go, perfect. And uh, that's uh, all we need to specify for uh, this box. So basically this box uh, will represent uh, each and every circle in our animation. So now uh, let's just uh, try and uh, call this uh, loading animation function so we can see uh, how will that uh, look like. So let's call this uh, loading animation function inside our column which will take the whole screen and uh, place our loading animation in the center of the screen. So I just want to check uh, to see if uh, those uh, three circles uh, will be uh, placed uh, in the proper way like uh, I have imagined. Okay, so there we go and uh, now we can see those uh, three circles. Uh, there is uh, one uh, more thing that I want to add here in our uh, uh, loading animation composable function below our box. So we basically want to separate those circles a little bit. So now here I want to create uh, one more variable named uh, a last uh, circle and uh, I'm going to say a uh, circle uh, values dot uh, size minus one. So what will this do? It will basically take and uh, calculate the size of our circle values list which has uh, three items. So three items uh, minus one and then we get the uh, number two. And uh, since the index value of our circle values starts from zero uh, that's why we need to get number two to actually grab that uh, last uh, element from this list. So why do we need that uh, last element uh, from this list? Uh, well, let me show you. So I'm going to say here if uh, index value is not the last circle, then in that case I'm going to add here a spacer and I'm going to specify here the width to be a space between. So basically here you can see that uh, inside this row we have a box and we have a spacer. So after each one of those uh, circles we are going to add a blank space. However, with this uh, if block I am going to be sure to add those uh, spacers or uh, blank spaces between those elements and not after the last one, okay? So that's the whole purpose of this uh, if check. And now we can also run this application to check out and see if uh, we actually have that uh, spacer or a space between the circles. There you go. So now we have an even space between each one of those circles and not after this uh, last one. Okay, and uh, finally it's time to actually start and uh, create the animation for those uh, circles. So now uh, here below this uh, circles variable I'm going to 
also create uh, one uh, for each uh, loop and also I'm going to call this uh, for each uh, index because uh, we are going to need this uh, index value okay there we go I'm going to call here a launched effect and as a key I'm going to specify this uh, animatable so whenever uh, we get uh, a new animatable or a new item uh, from this uh, list uh, then we are going to trigger this uh, launched effect block so basically we are going to trigger this uh, launched effect block only three times whenever we get uh, a new animatable value now here I'm going to call this uh, animatable which represents uh, each one of those items uh, from this list and then I'm going to trigger the animation so animate2 uh, for the target value I'm going to specify number 1 because the start or the initial value is 0 and the target value will be 1 uh, next uh, I'm going to specify animation spec so animation spec here I'm going to choose uh, infinite uh, repeatable because uh, this animation uh, needs to be animated infinite number of times and this uh, function accepts uh, multiple parameters like the actual animation the repeat mode and the initial start uh, offset for now I'm going to just uh, specify those uh, two first values so the first one uh, will be the animation and here I'm going to use uh, keyframes so with the keyframes uh, I am going to be able to uh, animate uh, basically each uh, keyframe uh, of this animation so now let's declare first a duration of this animation so in our case a duration of this animation should last for uh, 1.2 uh, seconds or uh, 1200 uh, milliseconds so there you go and now below that uh, we are going to declare uh, different uh, keyframes for this duration so for example I'm going to write here 0, 0.0 at uh, 0 uh, with a linear slow or out uh, slow in easing uh, then the second one uh, will be at uh, 1 and here I'm going to write uh, 300 so uh, this uh, second value represents the actual duration and this uh, first value represents the actual animatable value okay so you already know that this uh, animatable can have a value between 0 and 1 so now I'm going to define a few more keyframes and then I'm going to explain uh, how will this uh, actually work so the third uh, keyframe will also be at uh, 0, 0.0 at uh, 600 uh, duration uh, time at this point with the same um, easing so this one and uh, here also 0, 0.0 at uh, 1200 with the same easing so uh, from those uh, keyframes uh, you can see that uh, each uh, circle in this animation will animate for uh, 300 milliseconds because it will reach its uh, target value of a 1.0 in a duration of 300 milliseconds those uh, two last uh, keyframes will basically wait until those uh, last uh, two circle finish and only then restart uh, this animation uh, next I'm going to add here one more parameter uh, which is a repeat mode I'm going to add repeat mode uh, restart so we can restart this animation okay and uh, now I'm going to start this um, application so you can see how will this animation actually look like so at this point you can see that those circles are moving at the same time so we don't have uh, any delay between them and now I'm going to show you how to add the delay between them so that the first circle can start first and finish first as well so uh, let's go back to our code here and uh, at the beginning of a launched effect uh, I'm going to add a delay function so how can we calculate a delay for each one of those circles uh, well we can uh, calculate that delay very easily by using the index value of uh, each one of those uh, elements from this uh, animatable list so I'm going to say here index value times maybe uh, 100 uh, milliseconds so uh, the first uh, item in this list will have an index value of 0 which means that the first circle will not uh, have basically any delay because 0 times 100 is 0 so the first uh, circle will start immediately then the second item from this list uh, will have an index value of 1 and the 1 times 100 is a 100 so a delay between uh, this uh, first and the second uh, will be 100 milliseconds and then this uh, last item uh, will have a delay of uh, 200 milliseconds so now let's try and run this application once again and now uh, everything should work just as expected so there we go now uh, all those uh, three circles uh, are animating only this time we have added uh, a delay between them 
so that our first circle can start first and finish first as well. And that's how this animation will actually work. Ok, so I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video, if you have, be sure to comment down below and like this video, and uh, see the next one.